dearest Baba Megaskia, please accept my warmest greeting and my congratulation on the occasion of our Father's Diamond Freedom Anniversary. The clear truth is that our oppressors have left us but are still very much with us. Looking at your life, our lives, one might be tempted to ask what and why we are celebrating. Why? Wallahi, you have always known me, the masterpiece of this village, to not willingly choose the path of cynicism. You know I am not a doom merchant who always opens his eyes to see only trouble and ugly sides of our village's life. These few decades we have lived together, we have experienced storm and wild wind, fire and brimstone, hell on earth and occasional sugar in our tea, where we have plentiful honey and milk in the belly of our father's land. We have seen corruption, tribalism, favoritism, nepotism, and insecurity. We hope should be more visible. Serki Baba, PMB Baba, I know you have received many letters in this past. It is your duty to receive mails. I know. But as the comrade general sent to draw your attention to present issues, I know I cannot write like a guru of Owu or like our own bird of heaven. So, this one is a heart-to-heart -heart talk on the condition of our village. Since you entered that glass house by the rock, you have been shielded away from us. They don't let you see what we see, go where we go, eat what we your brothers have been eating. It is the reason I am writing to update you about why we must celebrate. People who wonder why we should celebrate have forgotten how insecurity and vices have not consumed all of us, but ruined only a few millions. I remember that our fatherland was once at the point of breaking apart, yet today we are still living together as one family. Does this alone not call for celebration? Does the fact that our fatherland of over 200 million households speaking over 370 languages is still living together? After 60 years of suffering and smiling, not enough reason to celebrate. Kai. On this note, I extend my warmest greeting to you, our village head, and all kinsmen. Megira, I want to remind you that the struggle by our ancestors for liberation of our land has not ended. And I want you to know that God and man have placed the responsibility to build the village of our dream upon your shoulder. The folklore of this land 1979 has given you the rare opportunity to write your name in gold. It declares you as the head of our family, the head over affairs of the land. You are also the Serki in chief the commander and the generalissimo against enemies of our land. You are a god, a demigod, who is promoted to a thing god, who has the power to decide the fate of this land that is flowing with milk, honey, and oil. Koba Akaba Seriki Baba Wahalai Talai Sumo Bilahi La Silawa I am sure you will agree with me that it was at a point when change became inevitable in this land that God and man helped you to do the impossible. You defeated the former Seriki right on his throne. You wanted to change a good luck to a better luck. But today, we are all confused and worried. 
I remember when you assumed the position of our village head in 2015 to preside over our domestic affairs. You said in a clear voice that you long not to be for everybody and not allow anybody long to be yours. I have always known you as a man of high moral standard and a man of high intelligence. But our kinsmen seems not to see you in that light anymore. They believe that you have chosen to ignore knowledge in favor of injustice called for my clan first. I quite understand that uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. Nevertheless, I beseech you to make hay while the sun shines so that at the end of your tenor, you will be evaluated by the standard expected of a man who fathers a family like ours. Again, I am pressed to see many of our kinsmen misinterpret your body language as foul odor, oozing undue preference to some of us from your mother's side over others. I have to tell you the truth like a son who wishes his father's success. If you do not write quickly to the occasion as a man who should be in charge of our family affairs, I am afraid that your attitude of indifference and indecisiveness may become the tragedy of our family life. My dear family head, you will agree with me that fighting corruption in our village would not have been as difficult as it is today. If you, our intelligent family, had used your willpower to say it as it is and do that, that is right. As Baba Megaskia, which means an honest man who hates corruption. I hate to hear people saying corruption under your watch is unprecedented. But the bitter truth is that every indicator pointing to the remark has been the truth. Our village scored 26 points out of 100 on the 2019 Corruption Perception Index as reported by Transparency International. I am sure that you are not happy about the rating, but I assume that your original intention was to right the wrongs of the previous Serikis, but the reverse is the case at present. In an attempt to bring corruption to the minimum level in this village, the former village had trained some specialized hunters known as Operation Eagle's Eyes to see and catch the thieves. Barao, money eaters, money snatchers, money looters, and money everything in the village. But these thieves were stronger and smarter than the hunters themselves. But it is very, very important to point out to you that the price of corruption is paid by the poor in the land. Haba! In the 2020 edition of a globalist of fragile states, it is very, very unfortunate that this village scored 97.3 points to rank 14th behind our cousins like Burundi, Haiti, and Libya in the alert category. Baba Megaskia, in case you don't know what fragile states denote, here are some of the attributes of a fragile state. It is a state whose central government is ineffective, a state with excessive sectionalism and tribalism, a state with widespread of corruption, a state with excessive criminality, insecurity, human rights violation, and state with sharp economic decline. Megira, this is our village in the mirror. This evaluation is upsetting and disappointing and I know how bad you may feel about this. Nevertheless, 
when all things go bad you do not have to think so badly about all things all you need to do is to think about the things that made all things bad and then you can change something Megida, some dirty minded jobless kinsmen say that you had a failed village i don't know what they are talking about i think they are the few disgruntled ones how can a village fail under your watch under your ego's eye it is a lie they have forgotten that the student who is not dead has not failed some of our villagers are thinking a great tragedy because only half of us just 96 million of the 200 million population are living below poverty line according to the recent paper from brookings institution an average of six people falls into extreme poverty in this village every minute the villagers understand that the global economic meltdown and COVID-19 are factors that are affecting or biting hard at global economy. Why they are hoping and patiently waiting for your creativity and intervention to ease their pains. The price of electricity and fuel suddenly increased. All these increases have added insults to injury for members of this community. Kai! It is not all bad news. The people asked me to thank you for helping them to pay for darkness instead of light. You remember when you came to the village to beg the villagers for votes in 2014? You told them that there was nothing like a fuel subsidy. So how come you want to remove a fuel subsidy that does not exist at this crucial moment? Haba, my heart double beat when I read that the Senate has approved your request to borrow $5.5 billion to fund certain areas of our village development. The fact that some kinsmen still call you Baba Megeskia an honest man without blemish is enough to make you think twice. It is not a crime to borrow if well utilized for the intended project. But the history of our past leaders has given us villagers the impression that any borrowing is meant to fund corruption. There is always no correlation between the infrastructure on ground and the debt that the village had accumulated. Our debt, both foreign and domestic, I learned is already over 31 trillion naira, but there has been nothing to show for it. My dear Seriki Baba, until you clean the system or remove the chaff from the wheat, villagers will believe that you and your team are borrowing so you could provide enough money for the corrupt members of your administration to embezzle. My Gida, you need to think twice before you take any step that has the tendency to tarnish your image or the reputation you have built over the years. I read in the newspaper that you made God your witness that Ogado not trumpeter called you alone to his office and hacked. Why are you killing Christians? I personally do not accept that question has been right. The right question would have been, why are you not protecting your villagers? How I pity you. You are not a murderer or a terrorist. You are a perfect gentleman. But the old world is pointing accusing finger at you just because you are the man at the hems of affairs. To be a leader is to be responsible for all that happens under your watch. This is why you must take the blame and wake up to your responsibility in all aspects. My dear village head, 
Security of this village is absolutely nothing to write home about. Terrorism is gaining ground every day. Our kinsmen are being killed, maimed, kidnapped, raped, and victimized on a daily basis. You said all is well and claimed technical victory over terrorism. But the victory, whether technical or not technical, exists only on the pages of newspapers. Nobody is sleeping with two eyes closed under your watch. In case you don't know, if you told the villagers to go on with businesses and their daily activities, but assailant and gangsters commanded otherwise, believe me, wallahi, nobody will listen to you because the fear of the gang is beginning of wisdom. And because our village and villagers are no longer having faith in your words, you need to climb down from your high horse and listen to the cry of your village men and women. Enough of empty promises and vain assurance. It is high time you did the needful. Baba Seriki, you are not just a leader. You are also an elderly man. Elderly people listen more than they talk. They give room for everybody to express themselves. That is why they are solution finders. Freedom of expressions and press has been suffering terribly under your watch. And human rights abuses have been on the increase. It is never too late to start the reformation process of this village. You only need the will to do so. Where desire is great, difficulty can never be great. My first advice for you is to do everything within your power to reunite our divided kinsmen. And this is probably the most important task before you. The unity of this village at this crucial time is not negotiable at all. There is unity in diversity. Just let your body language speak unity. You will be surprised how people will follow suit. Let me remind you, Mr. Village Head, that one of the major reasons the masses chose you is your anti-incident in fighting corruption. Time is no longer on your side, so you have to make yourself an automatic pilot in your responsibilities. The best time to start is now. I beseech you to be very careful of rank cancels. We are still wondering if it were your decision to increase fuel price, electricity tariff, and value-added tax at a time when COVID-19 is biting hard at the economy of millions of your subjects. Even if these increases are logical, your calculation is very wrong. It shouldn't be at this time remembered that you are accountable and responsible for everything that happens under your watch. Let me advise you to do whatever it takes to ensure that every kobo you borrow in the name of our community development is used for its purpose. Let there be improvement to our social amenities, especially our power, health care, education and transportation. I know that the problem of this land did not start under your watch, but we are calling you to build the foundation for reformation. The year 2023 is around the corner to end your tenure. And what importance will history attach to your name? A word to the wise is enough. Lastly, before I rest my case, I want to urge you to revisit the 2014 village conference. If over 500 delegates drawn from all parts of the village and representing our diverse interests could come together to discuss our political system and the future of our community and other issues that can enhance our unity 
could end up providing more than 600 resolutions in a 10,335 page report. Such a report should not be swept under the carpet. My fellow villagers, as we celebrate the 68th anniversary of our conditional freedom today, we should all restructure our attitudes from the way we do things to the way things need to be done. We should all say no to corruption. Why you make us all feel at home in this village? I thank you, Megida. God bless you and God bless our land.